Hi, everybody. Welcome to this special strange edition of Twinsburg Schools today uh, with the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, we are all remote uh, and, and practicing our safe distance. And even though I, I want to tell you guys, even though I'm in the studio, we are as remote as we can. So no more than two people here. You guys are safely alone at home. Uh, and in your office, we have Superintendent Kathy Powers and Business Manager Chad Welker. Thank you both for connecting with us on this special edition. Thanks, Dennis. It's our pleasure to be here. Thank you. This is um, certainly a strange way to conduct business in a school district. Kathy, take us back to the first day when you heard about this and found out about this. Um, how did you begin to prioritize how you were going to handle um, distance learning, in, a, in essence? Well, um, thankfully, it's because of my network that we actually started to plan, I would like to say back in February. In February, I was in a meeting in Columbus. I'm on the executive committee of the Alliance for High Quality Schools. And one of the agenda topics that day in February was the media release from the CDC, the first alert that school districts in the states needed to prepare for what could be a pandemic and what could be ultimately leading to school closures. And so at the end of February, um, my colleagues here in the school district, as well as our superintendent groups from Summit and Cuyahoga County started to meet, to pull together, to start to talk about what does this mean? How do you close a school district for an extended period of time? What are the things we need to consider? How do you communicate this to our families? How do we keep people safe? What about the students when we're asking them to disengage from being um, near each other socially? What would that look like? What about sports? What about our, our spring play? You know, what about the upcoming concerts? What about all of the trips that are scheduled for the spring? and commencement and prom. So the list was long. And so we started to work together both internally here in our school district, as well as the networks that we have through our professional organizations, um, because none of us have ever been here before. And no man is an island, even though we feel like one now we're all in isolation, um, but no man is an island. And I am so very grateful to the collaborative efforts, both of my colleagues here in our school district our parents, our community, as well as our professional organizations and our neighboring school districts. It has been a huge collaborative effort. I think that it, we have been successful to this point in launching remote teaching and learning because everyone was rowing in the same direction from the very beginning. Well, and Chad, what was your first priority? As business manager, um, what was the first thing that you had to do? So we, we uh, spend a lot of time within our business manager networks and uh, uh, OASBO uh, predominantly in looking at our cleaning procedures um, and making sure that we were uh, using the correct type of disinfectant uh, to uh, combat coronavirus. And so uh, we instituted a, a wide range of cleaning practices in our buildings. Um, with electrostatic sprayers using a disinfectant in all of our classrooms and hallways, uh, hitting high touch areas, as well as our uh, buses um, to make sure that our buses were disinfected as well. You know, if I could interject here, we were concerned during the winter season about the flu um, virus. And so Chad had been forward in his thinking uh, to have the electrostatic sprayers wasn't a, a thought right when we were talking about um, COVID-19. He had those things in place, uh, I wouldn't say in the fall, no, Chad? Uh, making sure that our custodial staff had the yeah. equipment they needed um, quite early in this school year, um, because we always wanted to make sure that our, our teaching and learning environments are healthy for everybody. So what does uh, the, the, the classroom, uh, the virtual classroom, and what does learning look like right now in Twinsburg City Schools? And then also, what do the buildings look like and what's going on there? Well, teaching and learning at this point obviously is remote. Um, from Chromebooks being used 
quite proficiently by our high school students who have had Chromebooks now for two years in a one-to-one -one, um, platform uh, to uh, our elementary students who may have not had that much experience using technology in a one-to-one -one basis, but have transitioned there. We do have some families who struggle with having a Wi-Fi. We have some from families who struggle with having a Chromebook or a laptop or a desktop computer. Um, so we have reached out to families and provided um, the, the district issued uh, Chromebooks. Um, also, uh, as far as Wi-Fi access, um, there are certain spots in our school district where parents can um, drive up to parking lots and download assignments and upload assignments using the district's Wi-Fi, in particular outside of um, the main office at RBC and also over at Wilcox Primary School. So besides having the personal contact, it's really business as usual for the students as far as the curriculum and, and learning. Well, it's, it's, it has been adjusted because you cannot expect a child to do the same amount of homework or classwork, rather, um, in a virtual kind of uh, classroom. It's very difficult for some students to, to do that. It's also a challenge for our teachers to have transitioned to this virtual world so quickly. Uh, thankfully, we've been doing a lot of professional development with the Google Classroom, and so our teachers had um, that experience in their back pocket, and that's pre preschool all the way up to grade 12. But we cannot expect our students to maintain the same um, rigorous level of assignments when we're talking about a virtual world. Obviously, the assignments that we are preparing for the students are standards-based, they're rich. We hope that they're exciting for the kids uh, to complete. Um, and our teachers really recognize the fact that for some families, this is a struggle. Some parents are working during the day and really can't be there to help the child do their work. Um, some uh, students are working evening hours uh, to support families because of the economic situation that we're finding ourselves in. And so the, the, the long story short here is that everyone understands, as far as my staff members go, that the world is different and um, we have to have different expectations with regard to the amount of work we can assign our students um, and also how um, the way that we have to support our families, not only through the academic piece, but also understanding the social emotional impact of what's happening to everybody. Well, and, and that's a key point, Kathy, because a school district is not just teaching and education. I mean, you offer so many different services. Um, mental health, is there still access for counselors and mental health? And you're currently feeding, still feeding, a lot of people in the area. So talk about that. Well, we um, have a wonderful food service supervisor, Mark Bendis, and an excellent food service staff. Um, and our transportation department, Mark Desmond, our supervisor, as well as our drivers, are supporting our Twinsburg City School District meal drop program. So once a week on Tuesdays um, for qualifying students, um, there are meals that are dropped at three locations in our community, as well as at Samuel Bissell Elementary School. Yesterday, we dropped um, 1,300 meals out. So it is a, a wonderful effort. I so appreciate all of the members of our staff who are behind this, who are coming in. Um, packing lunches and providing them to our families out in the community. Also a shout out to Heinen's and to Giant Eagle here in Twinsburg. They have been so generous in donating the bags that we're using uh, to provide those meals to our families. So we thank them very much for continuing to be great partners with the school district. Well, and, and I think it's so nice to see the community coming together. And I think if there's a silver lining in any of this, it's, you know, we have, we have seen so much separation uh, lately um, and now this has kind of brought everybody together and it sounds like your staff and the parents and the kids are really doing a good job coming together uh, to make this the best of a bad situation. Absolutely you know and, and Chad can address this even as we're closed we have members of the staff who are in that continue to support the, the operation of the district. Yeah, so so we're we're actually doing building checks uh, twice twice a week on Tuesdays and Fridays, 
Um, and that that's really essential for our head and night custodians to make sure that we're checking all of our HVAC systems, our roofing, um, plumbing, um, and, and it's extremely critical. Uh, for instance, we, we prevented a, a major uh, flood possibility at, at Twinsburg High School. Uh, one of our heat pumps actually failed. And during our building check, we were able to catch that early and, and uh, get that addressed. So um, a lot of things that go on behind the scenes to make sure that our buildings are safe um, and, and operable. We also are doing uh, bus checks still um, to make sure that all of our buses are, are able to operate uh, for our food service program. Um, if, if you don't start a bus over a certain period of time, it, it can cause some pretty good problems too, um, as some of you might have experienced with your car. So um, just uh, different things like that, trying to uh, maintain our, our uh, assets. And Kathy, I'm sure uh, all this information is on the website and if, if if kids need or parents need some emotional support, uh, there's a, a place on the website that they can go and, and access that? Right, we continue to partnership with our friends at Beachbrook and we have three Beachbrook social workers that uh, continue to support our families. In addition to that, our school counselors um, have been so great in connecting with the students and their families. Um, and so my message to our, our parents is if your child um, or you are struggling through this uh, school closure and um, the well-being of your child is in question, you need some help, please reach out to one of our school counselors or to one of uh, our Beachbrook social workers. That's what we're here for. We're here to support you. And we want to make sure that when we're able to reopen the district, that our kids and our families are in a good place and, and can come back and join us and uh, be healthy and, and be ready to go. Well, one of the most heartbreaking things uh, for most people and for, you know, for us looking at this is seniors and the fact that, you know, what should be the best time of their high school career um, and, and, you know, some of these, some of these events, once in a lifetime events, um, you know, have, have been drastically changed. So what's going on for seniors, specifically prom and graduation? Well, thanks for mentioning our, our class of 2020, Dennis. Um, of all of the grade bands, that is the group that I am feeling so um, badly for uh, because of the school closure, because your senior year should be, you know, your year to shine, uh, your last time to do a lot of different things from spring sports to that spring play to the last uh, orchestra concert, whatever it is that is in your world. We want to support kids in doing those wonderful things and for the opportunities to be taken away because of this um, i'm very saddened by that i know that the kids and their their parents are as well as well as our staff members um, but we really want to ensure that our students have a chance to celebrate at prom and that they have a chance to walk across uh, the stage at ej thomas hall and so um, our senior class advisor is uh, miss Brittany hardery and our senior graduation advisor is mrs donna houston and Ms. Hardery and Mrs. Houston and Dr. Hebert and the staff at the high school have been working behind the scenes to um, reschedule where they can. So the, the students and the parents already know that prom has been rescheduled to the Friday of Memorial Day weekend. Um, and it was early in May. So this is about three weeks later than it was scheduled to be. Currently, commencement is still on Sunday, May 31st. And we hope that we're able to celebrate on Sunday, May 31st and watch those wonderful students cross the stage. Um, but if not, um, E.J. Thomas Hall has been very kind and have, has offered us two additional dates that we're holding on, one the middle of June and one the middle of July. So it is our intention to provide those great um, celebratory events for our students and their families. Those things are family events too, and we wanna make sure that that can happen. And to our best of our ability, um, that will be the case. Well, not just seniors have their once-in-a-lifetime moments. You've got the Washington trip for, is it eighth graders? Uh, what's going on with that, and, and do we have a contingency plan there? Well, interesting. You know, we have had a little experience with our Washington, D.C. trip. A couple of years ago, we had to make some quick adjustments, and Mr. Welker was deep in the, 
water with me, uh, making things happen for the eighth graders two years ago, I think. Um, so we've had some practice. And so uh, what has happened is thankfully the hotel in Washington, DC and um, the company that we use for our buses um, have been so very kind. And the, the, that trip is rescheduled for October 6th, 7th and 8th. So although the students won't be eighth graders anymore, they'll be freshmen at the high school. Um, they will get their trip. It will be in October. It will be awesome. And our ninth grade staff will have a new opportunity to look forward to. I know they're excited and some of our eighth grade teachers will accompany them because actually how it works in our district is that the eighth grade teachers are the uh, tour chaperones. They, they are the tour guides. They know DC back and forth and so they'll be going with the students too. So, so happy for that opportunity. And uh, I thank Chad and Jim Reese and Laura Hebert and a whole bunch of other people, especially Ed Lipnos at RBC, who is the teacher leader working together, making it happen for our eighth graders. Well, we also, our, our hearts go out to, to everybody who participated in winter sports, spring sports, orchestra, band, choir, all of those types of things. And again, it's not just the seniors, but losing, a, you know, losing your spring concert or, or losing that kinds of things, you know, can be depressing for kids and, and, and can really take a chunk out of their experience. What about sports and the extracurriculars and bands and music? Uh, any, any plans for that? Well, I think um, the student that got caught right in the middle here that I feel the most um, sad for is Aiden Corrigan. He was our Twinsburg High School wrestler who was headed to the OHSA state wrestling tournament. And um, obviously at this point, that event has been canceled. Fortunately, Aiden is an underclassman, so he will have an opportunity, and I'm sure he'll be there next year, and uh, we're going to be proud to see him in Columbus, but um, that's tough. That's tough to have worked so hard all season and for the years before this and get to that, that wonderful point in his wrestling career, and it was not to be, so um, we know he'll be back, and so um, that's that's the, the most difficult one as far as sports go. Um, Obviously, we had uh, spring sports were starting to launch when the school district closed. We had some student athletes uh, selected for teams. Some teams were almost to that point. You know, some preseason work was done, and now everything is on hold. Depending on where the governor goes with the school closure, um, the OHSAA may or may not open a spring sports season. So we're we're on you know we're on the tarmac waiting to see if we're going to fly. I'm not quite sure that's going to happen, but I'm hoping something will happen especially for our seniors who would have one last time to wear the blue and white and represent the school district and just be proud to do that. So how is um, test taking and grading and attendance, um, how is that, I'm sure that's changed drastically, how are you handling that? Right, so what we ask of our students as far as attendance goes is that they are actively engaged in assignments, are um, submitting work, um, are participating in Google Meets such as this where they can um, or if um, that is not their world in elementary school it's a little different that if they don't have the technology we ask parents to take photocopies of assignments that are completed and email those to the teachers so those um, assignments can be assessed. More than anything else um, it's about making sure that our students are keeping up with skills um, and that um, we have a good understanding as this year ends and next year begins that we know a little bit about um, the level of proficiency of our students and we appreciate everyone's assistance with the grading piece of this making sure that kids are engaging and um, where where the need is um, where the, there is the need is making sure that uh, parents are reaching out to teachers and teachers are reaching out to parents so there's a, a bridge between home and school in support of our kids well, despite all of this, it still has to be business as usual, Chad, as far as building maintenance and projects that, that you had planned, you know, for the summer. Um, are those still in the works? And are you having uh, assurances from contractors that they'll be available? How are all your summer plans going uh, as far as upgrades and maintenance? So we're, we're absolutely hard at work uh, for our summer projects. Um, our, I, I think we have really strong uh, relationships with our vendors. And so 
Um, th there certainly have been challenges uh, in regards to getting certain supplies, uh, all the way from like cleaning supplies to um, even things like Chromebooks and, and, and some of the chips, uh, whether they're being produced or not at this time. Um, but uh, it, it is business as usual, um, trying to get all of our summer projects lined up um, and uh, thinking strategically for uh, hard to believe next school year as well. So, um, so yeah, we, we've definitely been very busy at that. What about new staff? I'm sure uh, you have new hires. How are you handling job interviews and, and things like that? Well, it looks pretty much like what we're doing right here today, Dennis. <laughs> um, and thankfully, students coming out of college understand this virtual world far better than I do. And so we're doing interviews through Google Meets. Uh, actually, um, this afternoon, we have kindergarten teacher interviews. So um, we just continue to do the work. And although it's a change in how you do the work, the work is still needing to be done. And we have to make the adjustments because when it's all said and done, when the school district opens for the 2021 school year, we have to be fully staffed and ready to go. Our buildings have to look right. Our teachers have to be here to welcome our students. Our support staff needs to be here to support the operation. And uh, we'll get there. It's just going to be done in a whole different manner. Well, and speaking of 2021, what, you know, what do you have to take into consideration to transition back? And, you know, is this, is this experience, um, you know, maybe making you think that, you know what, maybe we will do a little more distance learning. You, you have already been on the forefront for blended learning, which is a lot of technology and distance learning. And I'm sure that sort of helped in this transition. Um, you know, how is that going to continue when you transition back to brick and mortar? That's a great question. And, and I am so thankful that the Board of Education here has supported the Chromebook rollout and most recently our blended learning initiative. Um, our kids are learning how to operate in a virtual world, operate using the internet, understand how to engage with each other and collaborate in, in ways different than when than the three of us were in school. Well, maybe not Mr. Welker because he's so much younger than us, but when two of us were in school. And so um, we, we are so grateful that we have the resources to support um, the many different ways our students are learning. I have been saying this a lot. I've been saying that when we reopen the school district, it will be like putting the toothpaste back in the tube. Um, and so I don't think that learning is going to ever go back to how it was before because we will take the best parts of virtual learning and to continue moving that forward. At the same time, we understand some of the struggles with virtual learning and potentially the unequal access that some students have. And so there's such value to um, um, welcoming students back into our classrooms and engaging them in lessons that are rich and standards-based and exciting and collaborative and get them ready to be successful in the 21st century. So um, we have a lot of work to do here in the next couple of months. We have to decide if there are students who are going to need some extra support this summer. Uh, we're going to need to decide um, what is going to happen if um, the governor makes certain decisions regarding the startup of school next year. Uh, I've been hearing a little bit about that, about um, having a plan B in case we cannot open the doors of our bricks and mortar schools. What will that look like? What kind of supports should we be thinking about already? So it's a different kind of spring, uh, lots of work going on, lots of supports to our kids and our families and our staff. And um, spring is a time for planning for next year, but the planning this year looks somewhat different than what it has in the past. Well, with things changing rapidly, I want to um, offer you the invitation. If you'd like to come back and um, you know keep us updated, we would love to do that. Um, it's it's nice in this world of isolation now just to be connected in this way and and see some new people instead of you know just my wife and kids and dog. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, so please, uh, you're welcome. Anytime uh, we want to give another update. Thank you both uh, for connecting with us today. And Kathy, I know before we go, um, 
you recently got an award for um, uh, music, excellence in music. Yes, yes. Thank Quickly, you for reminding me. We're excited. We just heard um, that the the community Ooh. has been awarded the 2020 Best Communities in Music Education Award. There's about 750 communities in the country. And the Twinsburg City School District community is one of those 750 communities. And that just is a, is a designation that uh, says that we have exemplary music programs, we have exemplary music staff, and the community supports music education because we know that that provides students with a very well-rounded education. I am delighted, so appreciative of our music educators here and our parents and those very talented Tigers that make it happen every single day. Well, congratulations with that. And I'm going to give a little teaser. So this is the spotlight. I'm sorry, this is the Twinsburg Schools Today Show. Um, you have a special treat for us, uh, for viewers, for our weekly In Focus News with featuring some kids who really have done some extraordinary things um, in this virtual world staying connected. So I don't want to say any more. Thank you for doing that. People tune in to In Focus. Uh, every day at noon and seven uh, to see these um, wonderful kids from the Twinsburg School District. Chad Welker, Kathy Powers, thank you for staying, keeping us connected, and I hope we can do this again and hopefully soon in person. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dennis. Have a great day, everyone. Hope to see you soon at the Twinsburg City School District. Thank you very much. uniting to help us cope. Many are fighting to give us hope. Let our love continue its glowing. Be happy, stay healthy.